Welcome to another of our videos looking at the Arduino, the popular open source electronics prototyping platform. Now in this building block module, we're going to be looking at how you can add a temperature sensor to your Arduino using a DS1820 one wire sensor. These are very popular. Now this might make an expensive thermometer, but it does open up a lot of options such as controlling heaters or air conditioning, logging temperatures, or perhaps as part of a weather station project. I'm sure you can come up with a good use for it. But firstly, what is this one wire interface? Well, first of all, it really isn't one wire. It's one wire plus ground. But all the information, including the power to run the sensor, is carried on a single wire with a ground wire, hence the name one wire for a single wire interface over which data is sent. Each one wire device has an inbuilt controller and responds when it is polled by a master controller. Each device has a unique address, so this means you can put multiple devices onto the same one wire interface. We're going to build a circuit based on a single DS1820 temperature sensor, but once we have that working, we're going to add an LCD display and then we're going to add a second sensor just to show you how easy it is. Now, if you want more detailed information about the one wire interface, there is a good page on Wikipedia that is worth having a look at. Just do a search in Wikipedia for one wire. Now, let's have a look at the very simple circuit we are going to make. The circuit is very straightforward with just the Arduino on the left hand side, a 4.7K resistor acting as a pull up resistor and the DS1820 temperature sensor. You can see from this diagram that two of the three pins or wires on the temperature sensor are linked together as the, on the ground and the other pin is connected to digital pin four on our Arduino. Now let's have a look at how this translates to our breadboard wiring. And you can see it is very straightforward. We have as normal taken the plus five volts and ground to the power bus on the breadboard. And the yellow wire is for the pin four for the digital interface and you can see how we have wired up the pull-up resistor 4.7K to positive. As you can see, it's pretty simple and we have it already wired up here on the bench. The yellow data wire from uh, pin four to the center pin of the sensor. The sensor looks like a little transistor, it just has uh, three legs on it. And we have the power to the bus and the 4.7K resistor. I'm not gonna spend any real time uh, looking at that circuit. You can see it is uh, pretty straightforward. Just look at the diagrams on the website. Now, once you have the circuit wired up, you do need to add two libraries to your Arduino development environment to support the one wire interface and the temperature sensor. These aren't installed as a default uh, with the Arduino development environment. The link to the one wire library can be found on the arduino.cc website that we're having a look at now. It's under reference and libraries. If you look down in the library section, you can see the standard libraries and then come down to the contributed libraries and you can see one wire. If you click on that, it takes you to another page that talks a little bit about the one wire and there is a link to the latest version of the library at the top and it has just downloaded the zip file onto my system. Now the library for the Dallas temperature control is on a website which is milesburton.com. Again the link is on our website and this talks about the library, what it does, the various sensors that it supports. And if you go down, there's some example code, and you can go down to the download section, 
and then the latest is here TCR currently it's at uh, 3.7.2 it works with the Arduino 1.0 development environment which is what we're running and you click on that and that downloads as well so you have those two zipped files downloaded onto your laptop or your machine now you have to unzip those files and then copy them to the relevant library on your Arduino folder. And they are, if you're running OS X, in Documents Arduino Stroke Libraries. So unzip the files and put them there. In Window, it'll be in your My Documents Arduino slash Libraries folder. Now, one little point about the uh, Dallas Temperature Library is it comes with spaces in the name and the Arduino development environment doesn't like any library names with spaces. So if you just take the spaces out, it should work well. Now, one thing you do have to remember to do is to restart your Arduino development environment after installing new libraries. They are loaded at startup. And if you just go and copy them over and try and use them, they won't work. So just exit the ADE and reload it. Now, there are links to the example code and the websites on our website at youcontrolit.tv. But let's now have a look at the ex first example sketch we have put together for this project. Right, we have the sketch open here and I'm going to fairly quickly go through it. The first thing that uh, may be new to you is the fact that we are loading libraries and we have to load uh, two libraries here. So we have an include for the one wire and an include for the Dallas temperature libraries. We're then setting some variables. What we're going to do is to have uh, my temp, which is the actual temperature at the time of the reading. And we've got two other variables, which is the high temperature. So we will check the temperature and if it's a new high, we'll write it into that variable and we have a low temperature. Now we set the low temperature to 50 initially so that we get an initial reading and then it updates from there. If you don't do that, you get all sorts of problems which you might like to experiment with. We then define where the one wire bus is plugged in. And as we mentioned, we're using digital input pin four. And then we set up a one wire instance to communicate with devices. So it's the one wire command on that pin four. And then we pass that reference to the Dallas temperature library. And then we're into the setup and the setup just is to start the sensor so the sensors begin we then go to our main loop so what we've done in this loop is to use two subroutines rather than have all the code within the main loop as your sketches become more and more complex it's sometimes a lot easier to follow if you have subroutines so this first one, which the comment is read the temperature, is the read temp subroutine, and it goes down to just below void read temp. So that calls this subroutine. And what this does is to send a command to get the temperatures. It reads my temp, which is our current temperature variable, by doing a sensors get temp C centigrade by uh, index and then it has a set uh, high or low because it checks to see is that temperature less than my low temperature and if it is it updates the low temperature with a new low and is my temperature higher than the previous high temperature and if it is it updates the high temperature so they obviously won't update each time just when you get a new high or low temperature and then it goes back, that routine ends, and it goes back, and then this runs the next routine in the loop, which is write the results to the serial monitor, which we've called serial print, 
and if we go down to serial print you can see that we have a list of uh, commands that print the text current temp print the temperature put a c in it then they put some space and lower temperature print the low temperature followed by a, a c for celsius then it prints the highest temperature etc it then it delays by half a second and then we're doing some conversion if you prefer Fahrenheit we're just using a uh, conversion to convert to uh, to Fahrenheit and print those results out obviously if you wanted just to print Fahrenheit you can update this accordingly I'm now going to upload and compile the sketch and once it has uh, finished uploading which it has we're going to open the serial monitor so the serial monitor is open and you can see it is printing the temp current temperature the lowest temperature and the highest temperature and as you see they are pretty close to each other they're just varying a little bit I'm going to put my fingers on the temperature sensor so that you'll see the high temperature go up 20.5, 20.87, 21, 21.25. Well, that works pretty well. But having to have your computer turned on to see what the temperature is, it's not always that convenient. So what we've done is to combine this sketch with another of our building block module sketches, the one on the serial LCD display, and that allows us to display the temperature on an LCD display. And that way, you can have it running and look at it to see what the temperature is at any time. In fact, I've enjoyed this so much that I've been leaving it all around the house just to see what the minimum and maximum temperatures are over a 24-hour period. So let's have a look at our combined sketch. And really, all we have done is to take the LCD sketch and drop in the libraries at the top, defining the variables for the LCD, initializing it, and then you'll recognize the libraries for this current temperature sensor module. And if we go down to the main routine, you can see that it reads the temperature, and then rather than go and write to a serial print subroutine, it's writing to the LCD print routine. If we go down and find that at the bottom, here we go, the LCD print routine. It is flashing an asterisk on in location 15.0. It uh, puts the asterisk on at the beginning of the routine and uh, at the end it uh, turns it off. It has some delays in there just so that the uh, it isn't refreshing too quickly. And and it's just writing the three temperature variables, my temp for the current temperature, my low temp, the lowest red temperature, and my high temp, the highest red temperature, and putting those all onto the display. So we've got that here. We're now going to upload it, compile it, and upload it to the Arduino. So while it is uh, doing that, we'll give it a few seconds, and then we can switch over and look at the display. And there we go. You can see we only just started it running, so there is not much difference in the high and low temperature. But what I will do is just hold my fingers onto the temperature sensor just for a couple of seconds, and you'll see that the temperature at the top will start increasing, and obviously the high temperature will start increasing. And you can just leave this running. You can have it powered by a battery or a USB uh, charger for a, a phone, which normally powers the boards quite adequately. And it is working pretty well. So you can see how useful having an LCD display can be. Now we talked earlier about the one wire interface and how easy it is to add a second sensor. And so that's what we have done now. Now this particular sensor is a waterproof model. And I have it to here. Uh, and it has a sensor in the end 
of about a meter piece of wire. And being waterproof, you can put this into all sorts of things. And you can run it on a longer cable and have it outside or in a fish pond or in a swimming pool or anywhere where you need to measure the temperature. So all we're going to do is to wire that in parallel with the first sensor. So let's do that now and have a look at a sketch to read two temperatures. So this is our sketch three for this episode. And I'm not going to go through it in detail. I am going to go down to the point where it reads the sensor in the read temp routine. And the difference here is that when it is looking at the sensors and it does get temperature C by index, and it has zero for the first sensor that it finds on the one wire interface, and it has a one for the next sensor. And you could obviously add additional readings just by changing the number after the get temp C by index. So I'm going to upload this, compile it and upload it to the Arduino. Now, while that is happening, what we have done is we have taken the sensor that I showed earlier on the wire and connected it up to our circuit. So let's just have a very quick look at that now. And you can see that all we have done is to put this additional cabling in, in parallel with the existing sensor. So we have the existing sensor down there and we have the wired sensor on the end of the cable. Now, what I also have to help with this demonstration is a glass of iced water. Uh, what we're going to do is to have a look at the LCD display. And then while we're looking at it, I shall put the sensor into the iced water and you should pretty rapidly see the temperature change. Now, a couple of words about the sensors. When I put the, the two sensors together, I noticed that they weren't reading identical temperatures they do seem to be very sensitive. And to get them to read identical temperatures, I had to put them absolutely next to each other. And even then, there was a little bit of a difference. They do seem to be very sensitive. If you have them apart even a few inches, I found there was a little bit of a temperature difference. Obviously, the Arduino is giving off some heat. You have different temperatures around different uh, you know, fans from PCs or might be blowing uh, heat. So don't expect them to be absolutely identical. Uh, but we did find when we put them next to each other in a confined environment, they were very close indeed. All right, let's have a look at the LCD display now. And you can see that it is displaying the, uh, the two uh, temperatures. Now we've been playing around with this and you can see that uh, they are quite a, a little bit different. If I hold my hand on what's a fairly cold uh, temperature probe, you can see that, uh, that it is going up. Uh, obviously, it hasn't uh, equated back to room temperature from when we tried it a few minutes ago. But what I'm going to do now is to drop it into the iced water, and then we should see that temperature on the left-hand side absolutely plummet down and you can see it is responding uh, pretty quickly to being immersed in that uh, iced water. I'm not sure what it'll go down to but you can see it's uh, around the four degrees C mark and still dropping. And that was a good demonstration of how you can display on an LCD two temperatures and that iced water was certainly cold. Now, in this video, we have downloaded and installed new libraries. We have connected not one, but two temperature sensors to a one wire interface. And we've also used an LCD display to show some readings. All the diagrams and sketches are available on our website at youcontrolit.tv, as well as our other Arduino videos. Now, do follow us on Twitter at youcontrolit.tv. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.